I'm going to be sharing with you a deadly secret of card magic. There are hundreds of ways of doing any card at any number. Literally hundreds of methods. And most of them have quite a few drawbacks, but the one I'm going to be teaching you in today's video has no force whatsoever of card or number, no mental maths, no sleight of hand at all, and the spectator can deal the cards themselves. It's a perfect any card at any number, and the secret is hiding right on the card box. This is any card at any number. So yeah, I am back in the new studio, and it feels really, really good to be back, actually. And today, I am back with a bank, because I'm going to be teaching you any card, any number, with no force, no complicated sleight of hand, all of those good things. And the secret is right on the back of this card. This special card can be stuck to a card box, if you like, and with just this item in your hand, just held naturally, it does all the work for you, and you are able to complete this miracle in front of the spectator. The spectator is able to then deal the cards to their number. Their card will be at that number, and there's no forces either way. It is two free choices and a clean miracle. <laughs> right here is called a mandala gimmick and what a mandala gimmick is is something that I've been working on for quite a while the only discrepancy from the front is that little thing in the middle but with just your finger or your thumb over that you can immediately hide that and if this is stuck to a card box it's not even visible at all so with just holding an empty card box just by your side or wherever you are calculating the right place to cut the deck in order for their card to be at their number. I'll show you what I mean. On the back of here is a card crib. The deck that is in play during this trick is in a particular order, and that particular order is known as Mnemonica. Now, if you don't know what Mnemonica is, it is a order of playing cards that is used in a lot of tricks. And when I talk about Mnemonica in this video, I want you to know that I am barely scratching the surface of the possibilities of this card stack. And if you don't know the card stack, you can find it online. It's on screen right now. This is the order that the deck needs to be in. And if you've never heard of Mnemonica, if this is the first time you're hearing of it, then please, please, I cannot recommend highly enough the book called Mnemonica by Juan Samaris. It is the card bible of stack magic. If you want to know anything about having a stacked deck, it's in this book if it's any good. So this is just the holy grail when it comes to tricks like this, and I hope to share something fascinating with you. Even if you can't perform this trick, or you don't want to, I still think it's interesting. A lot of magicians memorise mnemonica, and I think that's a really, really good idea. In fact, my last video spoke about Stackwatch, and this card is a very similar principle to Stackwatch. So if you know what Stackwatch is, you can already have a pretty good idea of what's on the back of this card. And in fact, I will show you what is on the back, because this is all of Mnemonica printed onto essentially a turntable so that you can calculate positions of cards in real time without the audience knowing. This little tool is so helpful when it comes to completing maths that would get in the way of presentation really, because for me, that mental maths would take quite a while. I am not the sharpest tool in the shed. I ain't the sharpest tool in the 
shit. Thank you, Smash Mouth. And I need this to complete maths or just have it as a backup because if I'm not comfortable with a certain calculation, I can fall back on this. So if anything, this is a great little backup tool. Even if you don't end up using this in a trick, I would still recommend having something similar on the back of a card box. Now, I know what you're thinking. Where on earth did you get this? And actually, this is something that I have worked with a number of professional designers on. So this is a professionally designed little tool. If you want this exact one that I call Mandala, you can pick it up. The link is in the description to a place where you can purchase it for five pounds. So this is the tool that I use because it's got equal segments, clear numbers, clear cards, and at a glance, I can just turn it with one thumb. I'm turning it right now, and the audience would never know that because my body language isn't suggesting that right now I am operating essentially like a calculator. This is like a, a paper calculator. It looks like um, sort of an Enigma code thing. But if you don't want to use this exact one, that's totally okay. In fact, you can design your own or draw your own on Photoshop or on a piece of paper, scan it on a printer, print it out, resize it obviously so it fits behind a playing card. And if you think that's cheating, actually Juan Tamaris in his book Mnemonica suggests using a crib. So this is just a different sort of crib, it's a movable crib. So how does this work in performance? Well, we have a deck of cards here that is in Mnemonica, and this is obviously crucial to the trick. So this just goes down like so. And I can take the empty card box and have the spectator name any card and any number, two free choices. And with my thumb, what I'm doing is entering in their choice. Normally someone would name a card and a number, but just to be totally random, we will go for the number 17 and the card Queen of Diamonds. Okay, Queen of Diamonds 17. Two random choices. So with Queen of Diamonds lined up on 17, I then just look at the top of the wheel to see that five of clubs should be the first card. So this has done all the work for me, all the calculations with just one thumb. I take the deck, I roughly know where five of clubs is, it's in the middle, so I just sort of cut that to the top and we're done. That's the work, it just looks like I'm cutting the deck. And because I know the stack, I know where that card is, I'm not looking for it, you know, I'm not looking through every single card, so it doesn't look so precise. You know, unlike with the other any card, any number I've taught here on the channel where you had to control it perfectly to the top and then do second deals, you had to really look through it because it uses a shuffled deck, so you had to look at every card. Well, with this, you don't. You just find it, you cut it to the top, we're done. Now, at this point, I hand the cards off and they do the dealing. So let's do it. 17. 1, 2, 3, 15, 16. I would normally pause here. 17, that's a killer moment. And the trick is done. But the work is so simple because for them it just looks like how could you possibly have known that in advance? The cut of the deck is nothing. You don't need to worry about the cut of the deck because it is just cutting the cards. It doesn't look precise at all. You just take a random, you just cut it. And even if they notice the cut and think that's something to do with it, in a way, isn't that more impressive? The fact that it's almost like a demonstration of real skill, and yet it's not because I'm just looking at my crib device. <laughs> it's almost too easy, you know? <laughs> I feel like it should be more difficult to do something like that. It's, it's just cheating, but magic is all about cheating. And if I have to use something like this to have an effect that's that clean, then you know what, I will. So there we go, that is the any card at any number trick. But I want to show you a couple of other little things now that I'm back in the proper uh, studio. I am really happy to be back in the office, actually. As much as I will miss the greenhouse, because it was a lovely place to film, I'm happy to be here. And yesterday I had a big clear out, I discovered some things, so let's show you some of those things. I discovered this, and I remembered that I was going to make a video where I tried to pick locks because this is a lock picking set. I don't know if that's something that you guys are still interested in me doing, but I would definitely make a video trying to pick locks. I think that's a, a really interesting thing to do. What else did I discover? Oh yes, who could forget? Who could forget about Sharpie? A little update on Sharpie, by the way. She started to bloom little flowers. I don't know if you can see this. Look at those little flowers. Look at those pink flowers. Also, down beside Sharpie, there's, uh, there's little sort of clover leaf things. I think Sharpie's had kids. <laughs> I don't really know what's going on, but I'm, I'm happy about it. So yeah, Sharpie is still alive, even though she probably needs a bit of water because I've been away for a bit.
So, bit of a catch-up, really. What have I been doing? Because the whole country has been in lockdown for quite some time. As I know, a lot of the rest of the world has been in lockdown, and I know that some countries are starting to come out of that situation, which is really, really good. So, if you live in those countries, I hope that everything is... You know, there's light at the end of the tunnel now, which is really, really good. So, magic-wise and practice-wise, what have I been practicing? Um, not really mentalism, to be honest, that's the answer, because the style of mentalism I do relies so heavily on the audience, I can't really practice it on my own. You know, I can read up on techniques and stuff, but I can't do it practically. I think the best way of practicing the style of mentalism I like is by having an audience. And at the moment, we're all sort of shut down and you know, locked away on our own. We can't do that. I'm certainly not getting any gigs uh, for the, you know, the near future. So I've been focusing quite a lot on card magic, you know, card stuff, I've been really getting back into it, working on obviously mandala and things like that, you know, still releasing products and feeling like I am being creative, because that's something, that's something I struggle with actually, when I feel like I'm not being creative, I don't feel like I'm doing well, you know, and I, so, I sort of get myself wound up if I'm not creating something. So mandala was a really good project, because I was working with some other people, uh, you know, on that, but also just on my own, being, you know, being creative and, and doing things that probably won't see the light of day for a number of years. I think learning a skill of any sort is really, really good, but now is a good time. So that's why a lot of people are getting into magic now. You know, I've seen a lot of people saying, hey, I just started magic recently. Because lockdown has incited boredom, and boredom can incite creativity. That's why I often think, whenever I'm bored, the first thing I try and do is make something, or do something, or learn something. So boredom's not bad, but I guess the enemy of creativity is laziness. Um, I don't think I'm a lazy person, but sometimes I feel like at the end of the day if I've not achieved something creatively, or magic-wise, or writing-wise, or filmmaking, if I've not done something, then I feel like I've been lazy, which isn't always the case, but I don't know, I'm, I feel like I'm in a constant battle against laziness. Let me know if you like these style of videos, a more sort of casual mishmash of lots of different things. I think this is it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I've really enjoyed making this. Uh, if you did enjoy this, make sure to click the thumbs up button down below, and I will see you in the next video.